name is Fila Beckton, the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. And my next video, I think, is probably going to be a review of The Mandalorian. I have to watch it first. I have it ready to go. I'm quite excited for it. I've got my Disney Plus subscription already paid for, so mm, looking forward to seeing what that will be. But right now, this video is not about that at all. This video is about... Watchmen, episode four, season one, episode four. Is there a need to say season one? Because there is only going to be one season of Watchmen. This is a one and done thing. Um, whew, it's a hard one to review because if you see my reviews, they're all pretty much the same thing. Lindelof, I think he's a pretty good writer. I think he's, a, he's got insight, interesting to say. I think he's a terrible human being, and I think it is bleeding through into his work. Very, very, very noticeably with Watchmen. So, it's a show about racism. And, but what Little Love doesn't realize is it's a show about his racism. And his, his racism is born from sheer ignorance and arrogance. I guess that's what all racism is born from. You know, I, I'll be honest with you, I'm, I'm equally, um, uh, equally, equally, what's the word I'm looking for, guilty of making the same assumption? Ah, I'll give, I'll give you an example. My wife, my wife recently went to, uh, went to um, America. And uh, I said, listen, America's kind of crazy now because I the way I perceive America is through watching the news, watching YouTube, watching social media, where people are freaking crazy. So I just assume that people are going to be crazy in real life as well. Uh, and that was an assumption I make, and that that and that was kind of an arrogant assumption as well, because you got there, and yeah, yeah, pro Trump, anti Trump, yeah, but people are basically like sick of arguing, and nobody said anything about it, you know, <laughs> just it just didn't. It, 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 I was wrong. I was completely wrong. Now the fact that I'm able to say that means I'm not Damon Lindelof, because he's never going to be able to say that. So. I don't know. I can you know, the the line that really like um, kept rattling around in my head this week. There's always one line that makes like last week we had an FBI like official talking about how white people can't stand it when other uh, other groups uh, are socially uh, are socially move upwards. What's it? Socially mobile, I think. Which is just crazy. I mean, really? No, everything. Honestly, most people I most people that I, as far as I can see, are happy for anybody and everybody to do better and prosper. You know, I, I mean that's that's what what I see, regardless of skin color or I mean, they're sane people. I guess you have crazy people who are, who have an axe to grind against, but yeah, that's not. But yeah, so that line was just crazy. This week we had my favorite character in it, which is the mirror mask guy. What's called Look, Looking Glass. Clearly modern from Rorschach. Great actor playing him. Uh, who's in that Coen Brothers movie, The Legend? The one they did on Netflix, it was okay. Uh, but is it, the, the, they were talking about the... Okay, so if you don't know anything about Watchmen... Well, why are you watching this? If you don't know anything about Watchmen... Well, they're talking about how the, um, uh, the main character, the uh, Sister Knight, you know, the, the, the main woman... Uh, she found a KKK robe in the murdered captain's uh, closet, hit, like, hit, hit, um, hidden in there. And she said, well, what do you think? He said, well, he's a white man and lives in, where is it, Oklahoma. So he, implying that more likely than not, if you're white, you're going to be racist if you live in that area. Yeah, And I think that that's Little Lost view of flyover country, you know, the places... Um, in between the coasts that these you know, people like Lindelof will look down on and they, they disdain and they fly over it when they go from New York to L.A. And that's basically it. And I, I honestly knows nothing, knows absolutely nothing about rural uh, 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 rural America. Now, again, I don't want anybody to misconstrue this and me saying, no, racism doesn't exist. Obviously, racism does exist. But according to FBI statistics uh, or stats or oh, statistics is stats, according to FBI figures, that's what I want. The FBI figures, the KKK has about five thousand members, which you know I said this in a previous year, and oh, you know I heard that, I got that statistic from your boy Zach, and so like five thousand in how many? There's uh, 
something like 300 million people in, uh, or 300, yeah, about 300 million. In, in, in America, so 5,000 out of that means it's like, there's virtually nothing. Oh, my God. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's just so not an issue. And the only people who think it's an issue are white, privileged, um, snobs, egotists that that live on the coast or live, uh, live in, uh, in the coast or Chicago or these, any, these other, any of these other cities. And this is just what they imagine, because they, in their heads, the only way Donald Trump became president was because all these people rushed out and voted for, voted for him because they all hate black people, just like Donald Trump. And so Donald, and so yeah, that, and it's just it's so crazy. Oh my god! So, so you know, you have this really objectionable person, this really horrible personality that is Dave Damon Lindelof, who's also very, uh, very talented. And you know what? He doesn't want to be. A bad person. Or everything, yeah, I think most people want to be good people, you know. So it's all wanting to wanting to be a good person, but it's but he's just hampered by him not being a good person, you know. Like this, this entire show is him showing off how uh, how good he is. It's called virtue signaling, yeah. And, and and all he's signaling is his lack of virtue. But again, he's got talent. So, you know, you, the scenes where it doesn't have Sister Knight or, like, black characters, he can't write black characters because he's so insanely guilty for um, for slavery in America and, I think, for Donald Trump becoming president. He's He's got to show, like, how he's, like, down. He, you know, he's not... You know, actually, if you ever read uh, uh, Alan Moore Swamp Thing, had a, uh, had a this run was set in the Deep South, um and he and, and, and they're filming this um yeah in Swamp Thing's hometown they're filming this soap opera there and you had like the it was all about sl slavery or set in the, the slavery era in the South and so you had a, this the, all these actors there and you had the black actor who was playing the main slave and the what and, and it's a great storyline it's like they um all these all these liberal actors suddenly become overcome by overtaken by the um. These are these these events of that happened hundreds of years before, and they become different people. They they start playing the roles of these of these people who they essentially become meat vessels for for ghosts. Um, so it's a really good story. It's an American Gothic storyline. Uh, but you know you have a character exactly like Lindelof, who's like trying to be like down with the black actor, saying showing how cool he is. Yeah, it's kind of like Doctor Who um, last year. The Jodie Whittaker took over. She put a uh, this big rainbow across her chest, which is of course a LBGTQ flag. Yeah, and again, yeah, it's so patronizing. They, yeah, I'm down with the gays. Yeah, no, no, okay. this is their problem. They don't treat people like people. Well, people are their external their externalities, and that that's really uh, Lindelof's racism. And he's just, I can feel him pumping himself up with so much pride at, like, he thinks he's being so anti-racist while he's actually being racist. So, uh, it's just, it's a window onto the, uh, onto why that normal people hate Hollywood. <laughs> like, listen, we understand Hollywood hates us. Hollywood hates anybody. They, they can't stand middle America. But. I think we also, you know, we, we don't hate you. We feel sorry for you. We look down, in the more elevator one. I think we look down on you because you're such a disgusting human being. Oh, my God. Like, you know, Me Too only really happens in Hollywood or Washington. Normal people, you know, have wives and mothers and daughters and would, wouldn't dream of doing that in a million years. I mean, oh, listen, that's not to say, you know. Men aren't always looking for sex in any way, shape, or form. Because we are, okay? That's just, that's our libido. But, you know, we also, if you're not, in, if you're not a disgusting person, you have some kind of moral standard, some moral, that you won't make you quasi-rape people. <laughs> I know, this, you know, it just, it never really occurred to me as something that I would ever really want to do. Anyway, so, with that said, Watchmen episode four is quite in. It's so it's actually it's really getting interesting. There's a plot, the mystery builds up. I think it's all going to come together. I really do think it is. I don't think Lindelof's going to um, really like just drop the ball like they did with. 
I don't think he's a Star Trek Discovery writer. Star Trek Discovery writers can't remember uh, what happened between an episode or probably from being scene to scene, let alone episode to episode. Maybe Star Trek Discovery writers are goldfish because goldfish only have memories of six seconds. That could be. <laughs> we have to look into that. Maybe we've got, yeah, okay. But I don't think he's that. I think he's a talented writer. So I think it's all going to come together. Um, love the Aussie Magia stuff. Um, although, in this in this episode, there's lots of very, like, nasty women in it, which, uh, like, they're having, uh, what was it, Laurie, uh, Laurie Blake. Uh, it's, uh, it's just mean to everyone. I can't, I don't really, I don't really understand why. And then you've got this new character, um, Miss True, something tr Lady True, Lady True, who, who again, I get in the same way the mirror mask guy was it, his looking glass is filling in for Rorschach. This guy is filling in. This Lady True is filling in for um, uh, Ozymandias. Um, Ozymandias is again fascinating. He's, he's, we now know he's in, he's imprisoned wherever he is. I still think it's Mars. Um, could be the moon. Could be, it could be in a different point in space. Could be anywhere, but he's in prison somewhere. I'm intrigued to know that that whole storyline. I'm looking forward to seeing it comes out. And again, it's just, it's just tragedy. It's just tragic because it's a really good it's a really good superhero story marred by someone's inability to write black people because he's a racist and looking down at white people because he's a racist. You know, so you have so what happens when you have a talented writer uh, who also happens to be a racist who has no idea he's a racist? What happens? Watchmen happens. HBO Watchmen happens. And I think that's what's going to continue happening. I'm going to carry on watching it because it, 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 it's, it's really kind of like a, a slow motion uh, car, uh, what's it, train wreck. Because <laughs> he's just, Lindelof is revealing his deeply unpleasant and just disgusting inner workings and psyche. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> so I guess we'll see more of that next week. My name is Fila Beck and the Rabbi from Another Planet. Please like, share, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Put your comments in the comment section. Or, you know, put your comments whatever you really want. If you can put them somewhere else, put them somewhere else. I don't mind. Uh, ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. And I've got about another hour or so, hour and a half worth of work to do. Then I'm going to watch, oh, actually, I've got something else to do. Then I'm going to watch The Mandalorian, which I'm actually kind of excited about. Unlike the last, unlike Rise of Skywalker, which I'm like, oh, I'm look, I'm looking forward to it. Like I'm going to, uh, going to the dentist to have a root canal through my ass. <laughs> they don't go through, but they literally go through. Incidentally, I've always wanted there to be a proctologist and a dentist work together and have a split, split level studio, so the dentist can go in from the top and the proctologist can go from, yeah, like a rotor router can go from the bottom. I think that'd be a fantastic idea. I, it's the only way you're getting me to a proctologist. If you, if you call me and tell me you're going to do it. My name is Philip Beckett, Rabbit of Planet. Please let me know what you think. Thank you for listening. Bye.